when you get up to the chair, please remain standing until you take the oath, and then you may be seated. Let's see if we can situate that microphone close. Please state your full name and correct spelling for the record. Sean Grayson. S-H-A-W-N-G-R-A-C-I-N. All right, Mr. Rivera. Mr. Grayson, you're in an orange jumpsuit, correct? Yep. Why are you in an orange jumpsuit? Because you all got me here. You were indicted on a federal charge? Yeah. And did you plead guilty? Yeah. Do you remember what you pled guilty to? Yeah. And what is that, sir? Selling drugs, you know. Me holding a gun and, you know, a crime I committed. Okay. A gun conspiracy? Yeah. And a drug conspiracy? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Now, you pled guilty in December of 2014. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. And on that date, do you remember being sworn in to tell the truth about your guilty plea? Now, I don't remember all that. I don't remember being sworn in and all that. I don't. You don't remember being in front of... Oh, oh, pleading guilty, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pleading guilty. Oh, I thought you were talking about when I signed my factual basis. All right. Yeah, yeah. I remember that when I pled guilty. You remember being in front of this judge? Yeah. And you were sworn to tell the truth, correct? Yeah. And that was before the court accepted your guilty plea? All right. Do you remember that? Yeah. Now, in connection with your guilty plea, you and your lawyer had to sign what's called a factual basis. Do you remember that? Right. And did you sign it? Yeah. But I also... Yeah, I signed it. But I showed all of you that a lot of that in that factual basis was a lie, too. Okay. Did not. Well... Do you remember being asked by the judge whether or not the information in the factual basis was true and correct? Yeah, I remember that. All right. And did you say anything to the judge at that time that the things in the factual basis were incorrect? Well, no, I'm not no, you know, you know, no government witness. I just got out the people's, I just got out you all way. But like, you know, a lot of that was a lie in the factual basis and you knew I didn't. I didn't agree with all that that was in that factual basis. Your Honor, I would instruct the witness to simply answer the question. Mr. Grayson, you're going to listen to these questions and you're going to answer them. I just answered them. And you're going to answer them only and not make the statements beyond answering the question. Do you understand, sir? Yeah. All right. That's how we're going to do this. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera. All right. So getting back to the factual basis in your plea, do you remember the court asking you whether the information contained in the factual basis was true and correct? Yeah. And you were under oath at the time, correct? Yeah. And you didn't make any complaints to the judge or to the lawyer or to the government at the time that the information in the factual basis was incorrect. Isn't that true, sir? That's true. And in fact... You initialed each page, right? That's true. And you signed it at the end. All right. Now, are you saying today, sir, that the things in the factual basis are a lie? Yeah. Some are not accurate. And you all know I argued that. I argued that. When did you argue that? When I signed. Whenever I signed that factual basis. I shared all of this from, from the day I signed the factual basis and pled. You all knew I argued a lot of stuff in that factual basis. Did you point out that things were a lie before you agreed to sign it in front of the judge under oath, or was that later? Well, I signed the factual basis first, right? I believe so. All right. Well, yeah. But you know, like I said, at the time, I was misled by my lawyer and the government. Feel me? I was misled. But you would agree, sir that you had an opportunity to tell the judge that the things in the factual basis were incorrect or a lie, in your own words, right? Right. And you did not do so? Uh-huh. Okay. 
Is your answer yes, you did not do so? He did not make any complaint. I know, but I need a verbal answer. Oh, I'm sorry. He said, uh-huh. I want to make sure that the record reflects very clearly. Yes. Okay. So in the factual basis, you admitted that you were a member or an associate of a gang called the Young Love Mafia. Is that right? I never admitted to nothing. I just played out to what was the evidence you all had against me. I never admitted to nothing. So if the factual basis says that, it's incorrect? Objection to the form of the question. It could be. I'm going to. It could be. Overrule it. Yeah. And, Your Honor, I would ask, by the way, for some leeway in terms of being able to ask. Yes. This witness questions under Federal Rule of Evidence 611C2. I think that's correct. Respectfully note the defense objection. Objection overruled. So, Young Love Mafia. You've heard that term before, right? When we got indicted. You had never heard it before? Not really. That's all that new stuff. All that come from you all cooperating witnesses. It wasn't nothing like that. So if the factual basis says that the Young Love Mafia was a gang, I object, Your Honor. I understand the leeway. I'll note your continuing objection if it's based upon the same grounds. Unless it's something new, I'll note the continuing objection, but I think it's appropriate. I'll overrule the objection if it's urged on the same basis as a prior. It's actually not, Your Honor. All right. Well, tell me what the objection is. I apologize. May we approach? Come on up. Go ahead. Yes, Judge. I apologize for asking to approach. But my objection is at this point, the questions are not being used to impeach, but being used to provide substantive information to the jury. It's beyond impeachment. He is departing from what he said in this court, sworn testimony before, in response to not his questions, my question, and I'm going to let him cross-examine him and impeach his own witness if he has to. He's entitled to do that. Judge, with all due respect, Your Honor's reaction to my comment is in front. The jury is here, and Your Honor is very upset. I don't want anything Your Honor might do to be seen by the jury. Mr. Fleming, you asked for a bench conference. I'm giving you a bench conference. I did ask for a bench conference. Your objection is the same as the one that was made before, and I already ruled on it. The objection is that the questions as stated, it's not so much leading under 611C, it's that they're providing substantive information. He has to answer the question first. I think he has. He's given an answer that's inconsistent. He's working off of the factual basis. Why is that a problem? It's, in my opinion, improper for the prosecutor to provide substantive evidence of guilt against the gentleman on trial with questions that are supposed to be for impeachment. I understand the court's position. He asked him about the factual basis. The witness has already said that the factual basis contains false information, things that he never agreed to. He's already established that the witness signed the factual basis, initialed every single page of the factual basis. At this point, I think he's free to use it. Okay. Respectfully note our objection, and, Your Honor, if I understand, as the court had noted, a continuing objection to the question. Continuing objection. I understand it. Okay. And I've ruled on it. It will be continuing as long as we're using the factual basis, just to be clear. And if there's an additional objection not related to what you've already urged, then feel free to make that as well. But I'm going to note the continuing objection. I think the witness has set the table for this line of questioning and for the use of the factual basis in that he's already disavowed much of it. At least, well, in terms of his testimony, I think he's disavowed all of what he agreed to in the factual basis. Okay. You know, so... So the factual basis, a continuing objection. Beyond that, I need to object? Yes. Beyond the continuing objection... If it's something new, like such as a question or a different objection, then please make it at the appropriate time. Yes, sir. Everyone joins in the continuing objection. Yes. Yes. Yes, so noted. Judge, I think we had already said that was presumed. Yes. The court would presume one objection is made by everyone. I will assume, unless anyone wants to not take part in an objection, I will assume that any objection made by a defendant heretofore will be on behalf of all defendants. It will save us time. Yes, thank you, Judge. Thank you.
I apologize for asking you to approach. That's all right. That's okay. That's fine. All right. Could you read back the last question? I'm sorry. It's for train of thought purposes. I wanted to know if we got an answer and where we were. Okay. I'll re-ask the question then. So, Mr. Grayson, if the factual basis that you signed and affirmed under oath in front of this judge says that the Young Love Mafia represented a gang, is that a correct statement? No. No, it's not a correct statement. It's not. And if your factual basis also mentioned Jacoby Boyd, Alfred Cobbin, Juwan Forsha, Ruben Geiger, DeAndre Hill, Dedrick Keelan, Delwyn McLaren, Brian Scott, Darius Williams, and Lionel Allen as being members of the Young Love Mafia. Is that a correct statement? No, that's not a correct statement. If your factual basis also stated, sir, that this Young Love Mafia gang, the primary purpose of the gang was to sell drugs, is that a correct statement? No. And if the factual basis also stated that members of the YMM gang carried firearms while dealing drugs, is that a correct statement? No. If the factual basis also stated that one of the other purposes of being in the gang was to protect its turf, an area around the former Melpomene project, is that a correct statement? No. If the factual basis also stated, sir, that another purpose of the YMM was to retaliate against other gangs like the one tenors from the 10th Ward, is that a correct statement? No. Now, your factual basis, you admitted that you sold crack cocaine on Martin Luther King Avenue, didn't you? Yes, me. Is that, is that a correct statement? I said, I, me. I said, I sold crack. Okay. So we have a correct statement, right? Yeah. That I said, I sold. But at the same time, all the other questions you asked, it never was a statement. It just was what, the point of this is, the only statement I ever made was, I sold drugs. I held a gun. And you also admitted to holding a gun. Is that right? Uh-huh. Yes. That's true. 